So I invite you to stand. My brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection that knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. And confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives us of our sins, we pray now asking God to gather Jeanette to himself. And we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. And while we mourn at losing her, we also trust in Christ, our risen Saviour, because with God there is mercy and the fullness of redemption. So we pray. My Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you willingly gave yourself up in death, so that all might be saved and pass from death to life. We humbly ask you to comfort your servants in their grief and to receive Jeanette into the arms of your mercy. You alone are the Holy One and you are mercy itself. By dying you'll knock the gates of life for those who believe in you. Forgive her her sins and grant her now a place of happiness, light and peace in the kingdom of your glory forever and ever. Amen. So I invite you to be seated now. Uh, just before Mass begins. There's, give them down here. And they're perfect timing now. Um, Darcy and Jacob are going to bring up the cushion and the photograph. Photograph Jeanette and the cushion with all them on it, is it? All right. All the grandmates. <laughs>
Daniel and Ahurag is in Vicog is in spirit nave. Amen. The Lord be with you. And welcome you all to the Church of the Immaculate Conception here in Trent Road today, those here in the church and those who are joining us via webcam as we gather for Requiem Mass for Jeanette Dunlop Nikoi. We gather to commend her through the grace of her baptism to the fullness of that promise that as life has come to an end for her here in time, that she will come to its fullness in eternity. We pray that consolation for you, her family, as we gather here today. Terence, Kira, and Nicola, Kelly, Leanne, and Terry, Paula, and Jacqueline, and the 11 grandchildren. Names all in the cushion before us, is it? Eh? And, uh, and all extended family and friends. As we gather to say also thank you for the gift that she was and the gifts we have from she and Terry's life together. And we do as people of faith and trust in the hope of the resurrection for us all. And so we ask the Lord for his mercy in our own lives as we acknowledge our sins and prepare to celebrate in these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God of mercy in us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord of mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, who have strengthened us by the mystery of the cross and promised us a share in the mystery of your Son's resurrection, mercifully grant, we pray, that your departed servant, Jeanette, may be gathered into the company of your chosen ones. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. So I invite you to be seated now, and Luca will read our uh, readings from Scripture for us today. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like annihilation, but they are in peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affection. Great will be their blessing. God has put them to test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they will shine out. As sparks run through the stubble, so will they. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love, for grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord. Just me. 
condition. Then I heard a voice from heaven say to me, Write down, Blessed are those who die in the Lord, blessed indeed. The Spirit says, Now they can rest forever after their work, since their good deeds go with them. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me so that where I am, you may be too. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ invite you to be seated. The start of the 14th chapter of John's Gospel is a Gospel that is used very often and most often maybe at uh, at what we're gathered now at a Requiem Mass. There are many rooms in my Father's house. I shall return to take you with me so that where I am you may be too. These are comforting words from Jesus to his disciples then and to us now. They were words of hope that he offered then as they made their way heading towards Jerusalem and all that unfolded that we remember as Holy Week now happened. But the youngest of the disciples, John, made account of this afterwards in the gospel writing that we've heard from. And so those are words of comfort and words of hope for all of us today, saddened at the passing from this world of Jeanette. And we also gather in the faith and confidence of Christ who says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, to commend her soul into that love, into that mercy and compassion that she received as a gift in her baptism. And also to say thank you for the gift that she was while with us here and the gifts that we have from her and Terence's life together, gathered round us today and embroidered on the cushion, some of them anyway, the next generation. So we are gathered with you, Terry, with Kira, Nicola, Kelly, Leanne and Terry, Paula and Jacqueline, all those grandchildren, extended family and friends. And we also remember, as we gather around the altar of the Lord, those who have gone before us, her parents, Joe and Jean, and her sister Donna. And in that first reading, we heard of how those who have sought to please God and souls pleasing to the Lord are carried off to the grace and mercy that await the chosen of the Lord and protection, his holy ones. And as I've said, through our baptism and through the symbols that are all around us in the church here, by our baptism in Christ, this can be a reality for us all. And we pray that the reality of that resurrection and eternal life will be of consolation and hope to you as we gather here today during your time of grief and loss that are so real and so raw. Just that consolation of Christ is the way to that life eternal. That although Jeanette's time has come to an end here in time, her life continues in eternity. That life began the 12th of January, 1960, in Craigan, when she was young, the eldest of the four girls. 
moving to Liss McCarroll Road and lived with her grand O'Coyle. All their uncles had her ruined, took her everywhere with them. The family came to settle in in Anderson Crescent, and surrounded by family there, she met her future husband Terence, who was her next door neighbour. Although they liked each other, no one asked the other out. They were set up by a friend, I'm told. There's a story of a romantic gesture from Terence by throwing a tomato at her to get her attention. But his aim was too strong and the wrong time, and it hit her in the face. They married at 18 and went on to have Kira, Nicola, Kelly, Leanne and Terry. And life was fun, raising those five girls with one bathroom. Terry still says, blessed am I among women. <laughs> Moving to Straban Old Road, she loved where she lived and loved to decorate. And the family have recounted that they thought she had a secret account in castle furnishings. Along come the eleven grand wains, and nothing made her happier than her grandchildren. And her dog Lucy came in a second, and the girls claimed that they were only third. Anyone driving past would see her and the family all out the front in the summer, sitting and the wains running around. And apparently, she also liked to feed them. But I think she had an account with Paul's butchers as well, according to this story. While on holiday in Donegal, she decided she would get takeaway. So everybody sat hungrily waiting. And she started opening bags. And it was sausages and more sausages and more sausages and one bag of chips then between the 27 sausages that she had got. A real character and a lovely character. And Jeanette has faced these past years with great dignity and uh, has faced all the bits and pieces of her life. And we all must do that, whatever is the package as it comes. And her passing brings before us once more the reality of the fleeting nature of time of the fragility and the preciousness of life and the suddenness of life's events and indeed our mortality and our immortality. We'd love to have her still with us, of course, but this junction that she has come to is one that we'll all have to pass through and we are uh, immersed then in the hope that our faith brings us now to give us that sustenance through these hours. And she has received immense and marvellous care, the family have asked, to acknowledge her doctors, Dr. Bihari and Dr. Callaghan, and all their team, all the nurses and the staff of Ward 41, and the staff at the Foyle Hospice, for their care and compassion and welcome to the family. It was like it literally was, as best you can, have a home from home. And also to all family and friends who have circled around and helped over these past times. A thanks to them all. And we take comfort in that hope that we have through the gift of our baptism, that we can pass through that junction, that junction from life, uh, from death, the darkness of death, to the light of life eternal. And Jeanette received that light of faith and baptism, symbolized today in the Paschal candle burning tall, and in her memory candle that is uh, lit from it reminds us that death for the Christian believer is never the end. And from that second reading, we offer this Requiem Mass for her soul in confidence in Jesus that he will bring her to one of those rooms in the Father's house. So we pray now her many good deeds go with her and she can rest as her time here is done. Lord, we thank you for giving us Jeanette. Now we give her back to you. Let us also accept our own journeys here on earth as they unfold in that sure hope that we have through Christ that we may be blessed also by the Lord when our time comes and be reunited with Jeanette and all who have gone before us as we pray. Eternal rest, grant on to her, O Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon her. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And so I invite you to stand now as we make our prayers and I invite Lee to come forward now. God our Father, we are confident that through Jesus Christ, 
you will bring us too through the darkness of death to your kingdom of light. In trust and hope, we now turn to you with our prayers. In baptism, we are given the promise of eternal life. May Jeanette be raised up to share the life of God in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Jeanette's family and friends, that they may find strength and consolation in the hope we have through Christ's resurrection from the dead. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For medical and nursing professionals, and in particular, Dr. Bahari and Dr. Callahan and all their team, all nurses and staff on Ward 41, all the staff at Foyle Hospice for the care and compassion they showed Jeanette. Lord, guide their caring hearts and gentle hands. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, look on those who live without hope and do not know you. Bring them to believe in the resurrection and the life of the world to come. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. O God, creator of life and the gifts you have given each of us, help us to use them to build respect for each other and our world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Eternal Father, bring Jeanette, her parents, Joe and Jean, her sister Donna, all our deceased rel relatives and friends, and all the faithful departed into the light of your presence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we make our prayers now from the silence of our hearts. The prayers that others have asked of us, we bring before God the prayers that we have promised. Lord, hear us. God of love and mercy, you give us the certainty that beyond death there is a life, where broken things are mended and lost things are found, where there is rest for the weary and joy for the sad, where all that we have loved still exists, and where we can meet again our loved ones through Christ our Lord. So I invite you to be seated now, and Ethan and Chloe will bring up the gifts of bread and wine to the altar. So pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord, accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. And I invite you to stand. Look with favor, O Lord, we pray, on your servant Jeanette, for whom we offer you this sacrifice of praise, humbly entreating that reconciled with you through these devoted offices she may merit to rise again to life, 
through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 <coughs> Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And I invite you to kneel for the Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created should rightly give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Donal, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Jeanette, whom you have called from this world to yourself. 
Grant that she who was united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. And I invite you to stand. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always, and with your spirit, Lamb of God. I invite you to kneel. <coughs> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life for you, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Have mercy on me, the sinner. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, says the Lord, so that one may eat it and never die. I invite those joining on webcam to make an act of spiritual communion now as those in the church come forward to receive our Lord, body, blood, soul and divinity in Holy Communion. For those here in the church, if anyone for any reason is unable to receive today, if you come in my line and would like to receive a blessing, indicate your intention to receive that blessing by crossing your arms like that.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Sweetheart of Jesus, I place all my trust in you, Immaculate Heart of Mary, Pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. And let us pray. And I invite you to stand. <coughs> Renewed by this life-giving sacrament, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of our departed sister Jeanette, to whom you gave a part in your covenant, may be purified by the power of this mystery and rejoice without end in the peace of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Just before the final blessing and commendation, just thank you to all of you, particularly our readers, uh, Luca and Lee and Ethan and Chloe for bringing up the gifts and Darcy and Jacob for bringing up lovely cushion and a picture of Jeanette. And to all of you for your participation here today. I'm sure it's great consolation to family to have so many gathered here and those who called with them over these days. And to Isabel and Aaron as well for accompanying us on our music today. We come now to our final prayer and commendation. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
trusting in God, we have prayed together for Jeanette. And now we come to this last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see her again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. And so we console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. The white pall over her coffin, symbolizing our uh, being born clean uh, through the death and resurrection of Christ, lifted from our sins and into life eternal. The holy water symbolizing that baptism of life. The incense then is a twofold meaning, a symbol of the dignity and respect even in death we hold the human body as it was the temple of God's spirit, Jeanette's soul, when alive. And as it rises, of the journey she makes into eternity and of our prayers in Christ as they go with her. We pray the song of farewell. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Let us pray. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Jeanette in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with them on the last day. Merciful Lord, Turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our sister forever and ever. In peace, take our sister to her place of rest in Ardmore Cemetery. Tell me this. 
It's not my 